Welcome to Pitch It, the fintech startups podcast. One founder, one startup, one investor at a time. I'm your host, Todd Anderson, Chief Content Officer, Fintech Nexus. On episode 60, I talk with Carlos Antequera, founder and CEO of Novel Capital. Novel Capital provides software entrepreneurs with non-dilutive capital and resources to accelerate growth. And non-dilutive is really the key term there. As many entrepreneurs focus on either traditional loans from banks or venture based capital, which obviously can come with various terms, including equity. Founders, especially first-time founders, can get caught in that echo chamber of Silicon Valley. Hey, we need to raise capital from this big fund or that big fund. And the reality is founders need to raise money for the best situation that suits their business. Carlos and I discussed his journey to novel capital the challenges founders face trying to raise capital, resources beyond capital to help a company's growth trajectory, the potential impact of a recession on capital sources, and much, much more. Without further ado, I present Carlos Antequera, founder and CEO of Novel Capital. I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome to the pod- podcast, Carlos. How are you? Doing great. Uh, Yeah, good to be here, Todd. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. Thanks for uh, taking a few minutes here. Uh, I'd like to start off, just give the audience background on kind of what your professional uh, career has been to date and a little bit about uh, you. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Again, thanks uh, for having me here. Uh, Just uh, to give you a sense of of my background, I started uh, uh, my entrepreneurial journey uh, right out of college, uh, co-founded a tech company in the talent management space. And uh, uh, this was in the early 2000s. And uh, that opportunity um, to grow and build a company uh, here in the Midwest gave me the chance to see some of the challenges uh, from an operational perspective, but also from uh, getting growth capital as you build that company. Um, You know, in particular, as uh, uh, we were growing, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, have a bank fire me as a customer, right? So we had about a million dollars in revenue, growing about 30, 40% year over year. And uh, uh, they didn't understand uh, that I was doing a great job actually collecting my accounts receivable faster. And uh, they got tired of, uh, having to justify that at their committee, I guess. And eventually they said, you got to find your own, uh, you know, a different, a different partner, right? After, after have some of those conversations. And, uh, and of course, being a, being a tech company, I had some, uh, some mentors that said, Hey, uh, you should uh, uh, raise money from, from angels. If you want to continue to grow from VCs and did the rounds for about eight months. And uh, I learned pretty quickly that, uh, especially at that time, ed tech was not a, a very sexy space and uh, folks, uh, you know, wanted, faster growth, wanted an opportunity for a bigger market. And uh, eventually, you know, after eight months of doing this, ended up with uh, nothing in my hands to show for it, uh, but, but a few a few valuable lessons, I should say. And uh, uh, so, so it's still part of the journey, right? You mentioned uh, when you came out of college, you, you started your first company. Where did that entrepreneurial spirit, that, that entrepreneurial bug come from? It seems that you've always kind of had that um, within you, is it, you know, from an early age, where, where does some of that drive come from? Yeah, that's, it's, it's kind of, uh, hard to pinpoint sometimes, but, uh, yeah, from an early age, I'm originally from South America, from Bolivia. Um, you know, I think, uh, part of it is just the, the, the immigrant experience, right? So you already, uh, uh, come to a new country, uh, taking risks, uh, trying to, uh, grow personally, professionally, right? I came here for college. I wanted to get an education, I was always interested in computers, uh, and I thought, you know, the U.S. is the best place to really immerse myself into technology, and uh, I think that's an element. Uh, but, but as but as a kid, I was always uh, interested in, you know, uh, how do I uh, make a little extra, you know, uh, stipend <laughs> money? And uh, uh, you know, I mentioned this story before, but a couple of times, you know, I, I uh, um, ended up doing like slingshots that I would sell to 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 my friends at school, you know, so. 
get a little extra money and 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 eventually you know that helped me save some for to to get my my first computer so uh i, I think the, all those things added up uh tell us um exactly what uh novel uh capital does and while doing that how did you eventually land on the the name uh novel capital yeah, so uh, after I uh, uh, sold my first company, I had the opportunity to um, get a little bit of experience. Uh, uh, we sold the, the, the company to Vista Private Equity, and I got a little bit of exposure around, you know, doing mergers and acquisitions, identifying uh, how folks really value companies, what they're willing to pay for in that process. And so with that, I started to, to do some angel investing. And one of the things that I realized in that process is that a lot of my experience in, in, in building my company and the challenges of obtaining capital, uh, in particular, I thought at that time at the Midwest had been gone. You know, I had been doing that for 15 years, but uh, I suddenly realized in talking to my fellow entrepreneurs, they were having the same conversations and, and the similar challenges, especially again, when they didn't have that uh, uh, company that looked like a unicorn profile. And so uh, started thinking about, hey, how can I contribute to the ecosystem? How can I give back? And, and in doing that, uh, you know, my first instinct was actually, you know, I'll, I'll start a, a, a VC fund, right, a traditional equity fund. Uh, and in thinking more about that and kind of going back a little bit to my entrepreneurial experience, I'm thinking, okay, how does this fit with what uh, I'm hearing from entrepreneurs and and and, it, and uh, the types of entrepreneurs I would provide capital? I found myself in that challenge that is, well, there's only few entrepreneurs that would fit that profile. And so at that time, I connected with uh, with my co-founder now Keith, that had just come out from the VC space, and uh, you know he basically said, "Yep, yeah, you're thinking about the right things," and that's one of the reasons why I I left my last uh, uh, VC position because I got tired of saying no to so many entrepreneurs that I couldn't help. And so uh, I'll have to give him credit; he came up with the concept of leveraging a new instrument, revenue-based financing, uh, to to provide access to capital to a larger set of entrepreneurs. Uh, that a uh, traditional equity couldn't, uh, and that's where the, where the novel came from. You know, and, a novel way of doing things, a novel approach for entrepreneurs. And uh, I, I'll have to give him credit for that too. It was it was his idea. Yeah, you, know, you mentioned uh, the VC fund. Um, you mentioned a little bit of time uh, in private equity. Obviously, you said your bank uh, fired you. Yeah. Um, and so you know, do. You've obviously been through a, a number of different stages and uh, a number of different, um, you know, capital stories along the way. Do yep. most entrepreneurs and founders, do they get too focused on there's equity and there's debt only? Uh, and does some of it relate back to that VC is kind of that sexy category? There's, you know, potentially uh, these outsized returns and you hear all these companies raising these huge rounds when in reality, something like what you guys offer could be the better fit for the right type of company. Yeah, you hit it, I think, on the nailing, which, you know, uh, when you go through an accelerator or when you read TechCrunch or when you see all these success stories, right, it, it, the kind of the siren of, of uh, raising money and uh, uh, is very appealing. And so so a lot of folks naturally, especially early stage founders, first time founders, that is what they go for because that's the thing they hear. And so, so it's, it's, it's natural, I think. And so uh, one of the things that, you know, I realized with my experience is also that not only you need capital for growth, it's a definitely a very important component, but it's not sufficient, right? So you need a few other elements and the early stage, one of the things that, you know, we've learned through my experience and just talking to hundreds of entrepreneurs is in many cases, they also don't know the key metrics to really think about their business, right? Again, if they're a first time founder, you're kind of learning as you go, but it takes a while to learn. And in the meantime, you make some mistakes or you don't optimize, even if you get capital, you don't really leverage it to the most that you can. And then even when you figure some of those metrics and you learn some of those things, and then what do you do with that? How do you actually implement those strategies and utilize that to maximize your growth. And so really we thought about novel, about how do you put it all in a holistic place and really help entrepreneur think about, hey, yeah, you need to optimize your capital. You need to also understand your business. And if we can kind of put it all together in a digital platform that is easy to access and provides you really all those elements in one place, 
then we can really help you move that growth at a faster pace, which is ultimately what entrepreneurs are trying to do, right? The capital is just a tool to do that. People are not just raising money to raise money or get capital for capital. If they're trying to accomplish something, and that's ultimately what we think we can we can help folks do at Novo. You know, beyond just the capital, what else do you go? You mentioned you hinted at it there. What else do you yeah. guys, you know, help founders do? And you know, when when thinking about an, an answer to that question, do founders that that you work with and companies that you work with find more value in the capital, or do they do they find more value in in some of the other stuff that you guys help them with? Because yeah. ultimately, yes, everyone needs capital without a doubt. Yep. But capital is can be wasted as you as you talked about there. Yeah, so it it it, it really depends. Uh, I would say kind of on the entrepreneur and where they are in their journey, right? Uh, but we we tend to align well with entrepreneurs that at least have the realization that hey, capital is not going to be the magic pill here. It's not the no not the silver bullet for everything. So um, I would say uh, capital is 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 in many cases the, the the first entry point of conversation. But quickly, entrepreneurs realize that the other elements that we can provide to them are uh, can be as valuable to them as well. Um, so one of the things that we do is write to entrepreneurs in order to for us to have a, a very efficient process to provide them to provide them capital. They will uh, give us access. They'll connect their systems to our online platform. So what we do is leverage the same data they're already providing us for that to be able to provide that data back in, in a way that is easy for them to understand and digest and be able to leverage that data, right? And so that's kind of one of the first things that entrepreneurs, I think, think about. But ultimately, also, they value, uh, we have a, a, a partnership from GrowthX, for example, which is a, a boot camp around uh, uh, really getting your uh, marketing and sales engine to, to hum in a predictable way. And so there are entrepreneurs that really, uh, when they're in that journey or they have kind of uh, run out of ideas uh, uh, in those areas that they really value that. But there's some other folks that are past that or or maybe before that, that it might not be a good match. So really we, what we try to do is leverage the data as well to be able to tailor really the resources that you get as opposed to just uh, you know everything for everybody. What are some of the, I mean, you mentioned some of the the uh, lessons uh, that you learned, but what are the some of the things that founders come to you with that uh, may be you know impediments or or things yeah. that they've run into? Uh, is it just you know banks are saying no, or uh, is it a bit more you know uh, nuanced and and um, you know um, different than that? I mean, what what are some of the things founders come to you when they you know come and and find you know, your offering and what you guys, um, you know, offer to the the potential right founder? Yeah, I, th I think uh, there's a variety of of, of, uh, of use cases, right? So in some cases, uh, uh, there are entrepreneurs that are, have identified an opportunity in the market. They're trying to accelerate that growth and say, hey, if I could just hire a couple more salespeople, I could really advance at a faster pace. I see the opportunity right in front of me. I'm excited about it. I just... Uh, otherwise going to have to wait to grow organically to take advantage of that opportunity. In some other cases, there are folks that are on that, uh, you know, kind of VC path. And for one reason or another, they might be on a bridge situation. They have not reached the milestone that they need for their next fundraise, or they're maybe just not getting the valuations or the right partner that they wish they had. And so they prefer to wait, but they want to continue to grow uh, and not just kind of stay in the same place while they find the right partner or the right, uh, you know, the right terms for their situation. So it's multiple cases, uh, uh, again, depending on the uh, on, on the business and the entrepreneur. But ultimately, I think that kind of that core element is, again, we're trying to grow. We're trying to figure the path to grow. We think that capital is a key element to that and uh, how we can do that in a very efficient manner, as, as you well know, uh, you know, the, the access to capital can be a very burdensome process for a CEO that's already wearing multiple hats. And also it could be a very black box, right? Like I, yeah, people are telling me no or call me later, but I don't know really where I'm at. I don't know when this is going to happen. And that could be very, uh, you know, very stressful to entrepreneurs. And, and, you know, it takes time away from them running the business. Um, do you see a potential... Uh, or or how big of an impact do you potentially see? You know, we're hearing in the news, um, you know, obviously inflation, 
Yep. Uh, we see rising rates, potential recession. You know, how does that factor into some of what you guys offer? Uh, and are you starting to hear from founders, entrepreneurs about some of those worries and what that might mean from a capital standpoint, right. you know, to their journey? Because obviously the first thing banks do in this type of period is kind of batten down the hatches and only yep. double down on those that they view are the best uh, of quality, both on the uh -huh. consumer side and obviously on the, uh, you know, the enterprise and, and small business side. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, we so uh, yeah we, we we focus on the on the business to business side and uh, you know what we see at, as as you mentioned at the macro level I think it's just uh, you know both banks investors and in some cases uh, you know VCs are, are taking a harder look at uh, you know where they invest how much they invest uh, and uh, in some cases they're deciding to wait a little bit make sure that. Uh, the companies that they're looking at, uh, you know, will be able to manage to these turbulent times. So uh, we're definitely seeing um, more, uh, you know, more conversations with entrepreneurs that either they thought they had other opportunities or uh, they're coming to the realization of, hey, uh, you know, maybe uh, we're going to grow more of that, uh, that, you know, 30%, 40%, which is not trivial, right, instead of the 100% plus. And really our journey is going to be different as a company. And so maybe we need to focus a little bit more on, on near-term profitability, but still continue to grow. And so uh, we're definitely having those conversations, but in many cases as well as at the micro level in which there are companies that uh, right, uh, are being a little bit more affected by, by uh, supply issues, by, by prices. And there are some others that are actually leveraging that as opportunities where other companies that uh, are seeing those uh, pricing pressures are looking at technology to be leveraged so they can continue to to grow and that's an opportunity for those entrepreneurs you know something that you said a little bit earlier struck me um you know when we were talking a little bit about the vc side of things um do you think some of the recent shakeout in you know the vc market around valuations um can actually be beneficial in some ways in that profitability for the last few years in particular has kind of before this recent shakeout kind of went by the wayside. It was yeah. all about growth. It was all about acquisition of customers and it was all about, you know, kind of shooting valuations and trying to reach those shooting valuations. Uh, but since the shakeout, it seems as if the profitability has now been put more to the top of yeah. the line uh, do you think that's more beneficial for the overall market? Uh, and do you think founders that are coming through either that you're talking to or or even those that are, are in the broader market, do you think it would be beneficial to them versus the, the previous environment where it didn't seem like profitability had, you know, the, the same uh, level of importance as it does today? Yeah, no, great, great question. And I, I think, uh, you know, we go through business cycles in which uh, there's more exuberance at some points and, and, and folks tend to forget about those business fundamentals. Uh, but ultimately, right, businesses that thrive in the long run and are sustainable need to figure that out, right? Um, uh, it's, it's, it's going to happen sooner or later. Uh, my philosophy, I think, is the sooner that you figure that out or you take that into account, into your reality, the better. Uh, and and obviously you gotta balance that with 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 growth. Uh, but um, I I think the, the the sooner that you do that and you understand that, then the 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 better it'll be for 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 the business. What's the uh, biggest lesson that you've learned thus far in the in your current venture at, at Novo Capital? Uh, I, I think it's related to a little bit of what we talked earlier, which is, is uh, um, uh, in a way, I didn't realize how uh, uh, challenging it would be to to change a little bit the framework of, of of view, the point of view of entrepreneurs. In some cases, you know, angel investors or other investors involved in in early stage uh, companies uh, around uh, what are the mechanisms, the right mechanisms to fund a company's growth, right? As, uh, so many folks understand and have the exposure around banking either from their personal life or from where uh, uh, their uh, uh, previous experiences have been, and they have their understanding of how uh, venture works and how it works. But if you try to give them an alternative that says, well, maybe there's a third path, uh, they really have a hard time 
uh, really connecting the dots and saying, okay, you know, uh, okay, this is a, maybe there's a better way to do things or a, or a different way to do things that applies better to where I'm in my journey or to my business model or to my situation. Uh, they tend to fall back into kind of the, the, the patterns that they that they know. So so it's been a lot of uh, uh, education uh, and uh, helping folks really uh, uh, and understand how this can be really. Uh, a different tool in their arsenal, right? So it's not better or worse, it's just different. And and when do you apply it and, and how to best take advantage of that as, you know, giving you optionality as an entrepreneur. So so that's been kind of uh, an, an, an interesting thing to see, uh, uh, you know, just uh, uh, talking to so many entrepreneurs and, and folks in the market. Uh, best piece of advice you received since starting Notebook Capital? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, there, there's so many lessons, right? Yeah, I constantly have and, and, and so many folks that help you along the way. But uh, I, I think one of the things that you, you tend to forget sometimes is, is uh, you know, the, the, the entrepreneurial journey is, is, is challenging. And I, I had a, a, a mentor kind of remind me of that. He said, you know, it's a, being an entrepreneur is uh, like, like being on, on a, on a tightrope in which you're walking from one end to the other end of the tightrope. <laughs> Most of the time you're really just focused on not falling and managing the challenges and being focused. But once in a while you get to the other end and, and kind of have a chance to breathe, celebrate that milestone because you're going to have to walk on the other side again, right? And it's uh, it's really about sometimes you're just taking a moment, celebrating with you and your team when, when good things happen because then you're going to have to kind of push again. So, um, and we take that you know, not just for myself, but I think we try to remember that when we deal with entrepreneurs is, and really treat them with, you know, with empathy and, and dignity. Uh, it's everybody, you know, whatever company you're building, it's, it's, it's your dream, it's your energy. And uh, uh, there are difficult times, not everything is gonna, you know, check perfectly. And so uh, even when we say, hey, this is not a match right now, we try to take that into account and try to explain to them, hey, here's where, where, where the miss is. And if we can kind of solve this, you know, we, we hope that we can partner uh, in the near term. So uh, that, that's important. Uh, tell us, uh, and tell me, tell the audience a little bit more about those around you uh, that are, you know, obviously working at, at Novel and, and what does the team look like? How big is it? You know, wh where's everyone located? Yeah, so we're uh, based out of Kansas City. The majority of the team here is, is uh, in Kansas City, but we have a few remote folks, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, obviously uh, you know a, a good size uh, technology team. We have uh, our, our 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 credit team. We're super excited. We just we just brought uh, 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 our our new chief credit officer uh, that uh, you know had a ton of experience uh, both on the fintech side and uh, you know former chief credit officer of, of of Bridge Bank. So bringing a lot of experience to that end of the house. Uh, but you know overall, I think one of the key things that's important for us is is uh, hire folks that have been on the entrepreneurial journey. Uh, I think for a couple of reasons. One, uh, uh, you know, I think they, it is hard for somebody that has not been, uh, has not experienced uh, really that entrepreneurial journey to, to come into a startup and, 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 and really be willing to roll with the punches and all the things that, that come at you. But second, we deal with entrepreneurs every day and, and the more that you understand where they're coming from and you can relate to your experience, uh, you know, I think the better product that we can build, the, the you know, the, the 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 tighter platform aligned with the customer needs that we can build, uh, and ultimately, you know, the, the more that we can help entrepreneurs. Uh, I saw that uh, in doing the the research for the episode that you guys had uh, you know raised some uh, outside capital from outside investors. How yeah. was that process, and and you know what did you learn? Uh, during that process, maybe from previous iterations of of companies that you had, yep. you know, how different was it then versus this time raising capital, talking to investors? It it it, it is a little bit easier in the sense that uh, you know I I've, I've done this uh, uh, a couple of times before, but you always get reminded how challenging the process is, right? Uh, getting capital getting other folks to depart with their with their dollars is not an easy <laughs> task and the first thing is kind of just admitting that right it's uh, a little bit kind of like uh, uh, going to the dentist sometimes you know it's gonna hurt a little bit but <laughs> you just kind of <laughs> gotta go through it um uh, but uh yeah it's it's you know it, it, it's a process of 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 really uh you know understanding really well where you're going uh making sure that uh, you're talking to the right folks right um uh, I, I used to joke that when I was doing angel investing, I used to get uh, you know some folks to pitch me their 
their biotech companies or drug companies. And, you know, I'm a software guy. I'm a process guy. I don't know anything about biotech. So it doesn't matter how great your idea is. I'm not going to give you capital. It just doesn't make sense, right? So you're barking up the wrong tree. And so uh, I, I think it's, you know, understanding who, who, the, who the right fit is, both in terms of, of capital structure and, and philosophical alignment, right? So uh, when we when we look for investors, we look for folks that, uh, think that the problem that we're solving is important as well, in addition to the, you know, to, to the to the money. And so that philosophical alignment is super important for the for the long term. Otherwise, you know, that's when challenges happen between uh, uh, investors and, and founders. Do the companies that you work with, do they view you more as an investment option? Uh, or do they view you, um, you know, more as kind of like a, a partner? Uh, because, you know, you, there's all these different types mm -hmm. of sources of capital. Yeah, yeah. There's bank capital, which is kind of the traditional uh, version of capital. You have VC and, and investment capital. Where do they see you in that kind of stack of, of capital providers? Yeah, we we definitely uh, you know aim to really establish a, a long term partnership with the entrepreneur. We, we want to be the partner uh, for a good chunk of their journey as they grow. Uh, we have flexible uh, capital options that align with different types of entrepreneurs on different parts of the journey, uh, and so uh, we we hope that that they view us as a long term partner. And we know that we're not going to be a match for every situation. Uh, but we are also looking at partnerships of, okay, how do we extend that when we're not the right fit, right? So, so we have some partnerships with some VCs, for example, uh, uh, and uh, when we can kind of refer to somebody and say, hey, now it's time for you to have this other type of capital, and that's the right thing for you, for your, what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, so uh, we definitely want folks that are not just looking for something transactional, right? So if somebody's just trying to refinance their debt or something like that we're not the right fit right so uh we really want to help them grow and build their business so they generate the most value for themselves and, and and their investors as well uh what piece of advice would you uh offer to a, a fellow founder uh that maybe is jumping into uh just starting a company or you know uh, uh, maybe a, a founder who's done it one time before but you know what what advice would you offer if a founder picked up this episode and, and you had one piece of advice for him ah wow um yeah so 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 many so many pieces of advice we could we could have another episode just about that <laughs> <laughs> let me stick to one for now i i think it's i mean it, it's it's really simple and my, my sound tried but it, it's about people especially in the beginning right so when you think about uh, i feel very fortunate when i look at my previous company and the co-founders that i had uh, I, I think they made me better. They were very patient. They didn't have egos. So, you know, I, that was my lesson then. And so as, as I, as I started novel, that was one of the key things for me. And I think I feel super fortunate. Not only, uh, I have a couple of people on the team that, uh, worked with me in, in, in my previous company. So that that's great to see that folks really believe that, uh, you know, we could work together. Uh, after that experience, but uh, you know, as as a uh, you know, Keith, my co-founder, uh, I I think it's you know just a great entrepreneur and a great person, and the folks that we've been adding uh, are, are are critical because those first folks that you add to the team are really what are going to build the culture and going to be the basis uh, and and the framework for what you build next, right? So so I think those first. 15, 20 or so people that you bring into the company are super key, uh, and and I would say. Uh, you know, when 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 other things are trying to force you to make an election that is going to be a short term, just because you need a you know somebody next to you to do something, the temptation is to just grab the first body that's available. Sometimes you got to resist that temptation and, and just be a little disciplined to go through that because it's going to pay in spades later. Uh, we have just a couple minutes left, so I like to end a little bit lighter and with some fun. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite book? Uh, and the last book that you read? Uh, favorite book. Uh, I, I like those books that, that 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 really tell the entrepreneurial story, kind of the grid of it. So um, what's that? Uh, the Hard Thing About Hard Things uh, by Horowitz. It's one of my all-time favorites. Uh, really, you know, gives you kind of the, the not, it's not, not the, it's not all uh, uh, goodness and roses. You have to make those tough <laughs> decisions as you as you go through your journey, and uh, that's a big part of it. Uh, I I think that's one of my favorites. Uh, and then latest books, 
I mean, on the business side, I just read the super founders, uh, you know, just kind of looking at data and what makes really big companies from a data perspective work. But uh, on, the, on the lighter note, I've been enjoying, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of, uh, of cocktails and spirits, and I was trying to learn. Uh, there's a book called uh, uh, by, the, uh, uh, by the Barrel and the Smell, I think it is, is the story about the, the founders of Bar Agricole in San Francisco and their travels around the world. Uh, around, you know, learning how this, uh, finding the best batches of spirits for their bar and really meeting the people that, these artisans that make this, uh, uh, these spirits and, 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 uh, and, and really how things get made. And so, so it's really uh, uh, interesting from that perspective. Uh, you know, as a founder, obviously you're very busy. Uh, what do you do to kind of step away and, and you know, kind of take time to yourself and, and unwind a little bit? Uh, I like to travel when I have a chance. Uh, um, it's been a little hard, uh, you know, with the uh, with the pandemic, uh, with the pandemic and and stuff. But I I also like to dance salsa, so I haven't been out there for for a little bit, but hoping to 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 get out there and uh, uh, dance soon. Uh, do you favorite sport sport teams that you root for? Um. Favorite sport, uh, soccer, or like they call it in, in South America, football. That's uh, my favorite, bar none. So I'm, I'm super excited about the upcoming World Cup. Uh, and, uh, you know, big, big fan of, of uh, Bolivia, where I'm originally from. They, they're not good enough to make it to the, to the World Cup. So I root for my fellow South American teams. Uh, favorite vacation spot? Ooh, vacation spot. Um, I love big cities. So uh, uh, Mexico City is one of my favorites. Uh, Bangkok. So uh, it, I just like uh, all the little alleys and all the little spots and, and, and find all the little nook and crannies that, that make some place unique to that culture and to that place. Uh, and then final question, uh, biggest inspiration in life? Ish. Uh, I have to say... Uh, my parents, they, they just, uh, you know, um, uh, been uh, champions of, of, of education. Each of, each of them has uh, at least a couple of degrees. And then uh, just they, they, they've been uh, always uh, uh, hardworking and uh, uh, yeah, uh, hard, hard not to say my parents. Well, Carlos, I, I appreciate you taking a few minutes and, and coming on the show. How can, if the audience someone in the audience wanted to find you, wanted to find uh, Navo Capital, how can they do that? Yeah, uh, if uh, somebody wants to connect uh, with me, uh, feel free to uh, to shoot me an email, carlos at novelcapital.com. Uh, try to respond to all the emails that I can. Uh, and uh, yeah, if, if you think that uh, Novel Capital might be able to help you, uh, just visit our website, novelcapital.com. Um, we have a super easy process for, for entrepreneurs to connect with us through our platform. Uh, and uh, we can tell you in uh, just a, a few days if, if you might be a, a match for us uh, or not. And, uh, you know, hope that we can uh, really make a big difference in helping the largest number of entrepreneurs that we can. All right. Sounds good. Well, Carlos, thank you very much for your time. I wish you and the team continued success. Hopefully we'll get you back sometime in the future. Perfect. Thank you so much for having us. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.